The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church Amharic. Yetiapia Orthodox Tawahedo Beta Christian is the largest of the Oriental Orthodox Christian churches. One of the few pre-colonial Christian churches in Sub-Saharan Africa, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church has a membership of between 45 and 50 million people, the majority of whom live in Ethiopia. It is a founding member of the World Council of Churches. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church is in communion with the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, having gained autocephaly in 1959. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church was administratively part of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria from the first half of the 4th century until 1959, when it was granted its own patriarch by Cyril V, Pope of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria. As one of the oldest Christian churches and a non-Chalcedonian church, it is not in communion with the Ethiopian Catholic Church. Ethiopia is the second country historically, following only Armenia, to have officially proclaimed Christianity as state religion in 333 AD, although some argue, on account of biblical references, that it may have been the first. Tewahedo Ez is a je. Ez word meaning, being made one. This word refers to the Oriental Orthodox belief in the one perfectly unified nature of Christ, i.e., a complete union of the divine and human natures into one nature as self-evident in order to accomplish the divine salvation of humankind, as opposed to the two natures of Christ belief commonly held by the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox, Anglican, Lutheran and most Protestant churches. The Oriental Orthodox churches adhere to a Miaphysitic Christological view followed by Cyril of Alexandria, the leading protagonist in the Christological debates of the 4th and 5th centuries, who advocated Mia Physis Tou Theologausisercomene, or one Mia nature of the Word of God incarnate, Mia Physis Tu Theologausisercomene, and a union according to hypostasis, henosis cath, hypostasin henosis cath hypostasin, or hypostatic union. The distinction of this stance was that the incarnate Christ has one nature, but that one nature is of the two natures, divine and human, and retains all the characteristics of both after the union. Myophysitism holds that in the one person of Jesus Christ, divinity and humanity are united in one, mia mia, united, nature, physis, without separation, without confusion, without alteration and without mixing where Christ is consubstantial with God the Father. Around 500 bishops within the Patriarchates of Alexandria, Antioch and Jerusalem refused to accept the Diophysitism two natures doctrine decreed by the Council of Chalcedon in 451, an incident that resulted in the first major split in the main body of the Christian Church. The Oriental Orthodox Churches, which today include the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, the Armenian Apostolic Church, the Syriac Orthodox Church, the Malankara Orthodox Church of India, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, and the Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church, are referred to as non-Chalcedonian, and, sometimes incorrectly by outsiders as Monophysite. Monophysitism is a theology adopted by a 5th-century presbyter and archimandrite in Constantinople known as Eutyches and claims that Christ has one single nature, where his divinity absorbed his humanity resulting in a simple, mathematical, one nature to which the Oriental Orthodox churches object. According to these, both natures in Christ are perfectly preserved after the union in Mia Physis. One nature, yet, not resulting in a distinct third nature. History Origins <inaudible> 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 Many traditions claim that Christian teachings were introduced to the region immediately after Pentecost. John Chrysostom speaks of the Ethiopians present in Jerusalem as being able to understand the preaching of St. Peter in Acts, 238. Possible missions of some of the apostles in the lands now called Ethiopia is also reported as early as the 4th century. Socrates of Constantinople includes Ethiopia in his list as one of the regions preached by Matthew the Apostle, where a specific mention of Ethiopia south of the Caspian Sea can be confirmed in some traditions such as the Roman Catholic Church among others. Ethiopian Church tradition tells that Bartholomew accompanied Matthew in a mission which lasted for at least three months. 
Paintings depicting these missions are available in the Church of St. Matthew found in the province of Pisa, in northern Italy portrayed by Francesco Trevisan and Marco Benefile .The earliest account of an Ethiopian converted to the faith in the New Testament books is a royal official baptized by Philip the Evangelist distinct from Philip the Apostle, one of the seven deacons Acts, 8 then the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Start out and go south to the road that leads down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he set out and was on his way when he caught sight of an Ethiopian. This man was a eunuch, a high official of the Kandake Candace Queen of Ethiopia in charge of all her treasure, Acts, 8 26-27. The passage continues by describing how Philip helped the Ethiopian treasurer understand a passage from the book of Isaiah that the Ethiopian was reading. After Philip interpreted the passage as prophecy referring to Jesus Christ, the Ethiopian requested that Philip baptize him, and Philip did so. The Ethiopic version of this verse reads, Hendek. Queen Gersamot Hendek VII was the queen of Ethiopia from c. 42 to 52. Where the possibility of gospel missions by the Ethiopian eunuch cannot be directly inferred from the books of the New Testament, Irenaeus of Lyons around 180 AD writes that, Simon Bacos preached the good news in his homeland outlining also the theme of his preaching as being the coming in flesh of God that was preached to you all before. The same kind of witness is shared by 3rd and 4th century writers such as Eusebius of Caesarea and Origen of Alexandria. Oriental Orthodox Christianity became the established church of the Ethiopian Aksumite Kingdom under King Azana in the 4th century when priesthood and the sacraments were brought for the first time through a Syrian Greek named Fermentius, known by the local population in Ethiopia as Abba Salama, Kesete Baran, Father of Peace, Revealer of Light. As a youth, Fermentius had been shipwrecked with his brother Aedesius on the Eritrean coast. The brothers managed to be brought to the royal court, where they rose to positions of influence and baptized Emperor Azana. Azana sent Fermentius to Alexandria to ask the patriarch, Saint Athanasius, to appoint a bishop for Ethiopia. Athanasius appointed Fermentius, who returned to Ethiopia as bishop with the name of Abuna Salama. From then on, until 1959, the Pope of Alexandria, as Patriarch of All Africa, always named an Egyptian a cop to be Abuna or Archbishop of the Ethiopian Church. <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle Ages <inaudible> Union with the Coptic Orthodox Church continued after the Arab conquest of Egypt. Abu Salah records in the 12th century that the Patriarch always sent letters twice a year to the kings of Abyssinia Ethiopia and Nubia, until Al-Hakim stopped the practice. Cyril, 67th Patriarch, sent Severus as bishop, with orders to put down polygamy and to enforce observance of canonical consecration for all churches. These examples show the close relations of the two churches throughout the Middle Ages. In 1439, in the reign of Zara Yacoub, a religious discussion between Abba Gyorgis and a French visitor led to the dispatch of an embassy from Ethiopia to the Vatican. Jesuit interim The period of Jesuit influence, which broke the connection with Egypt, began a new chapter in church history. The initiative in Roman Catholic missions to Ethiopia was taken, not by Rome, but by Portugal, in the course of a conflict with the Muslim Ottoman Empire and the Sultanate of Adal for the command of the trade route to India via the Red Sea. In 1507 Matthew, or Matthias, an Armenian, had been sent as an Ethiopian envoy to Portugal to ask for aid against the Adal Sultanate. In 1520 an embassy under Dom Rodrigo de Lima landed in Ethiopia by which time Adal had been remobilized under Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al-Ghazi. An interesting account of the Portuguese mission, which lasted for several years, was written by Francisco Alvarez, its chaplain. Later, Ignatius Loyola wished to take up the task of conversion, but was forbidden to do so. Instead, the Pope sent out João Nunes Barreto as Patriarch of the East Indies, with André de Oviedo as Bishop, and from Goa envoys went to Ethiopia, followed by Oviedo himself, to secure the king's adherence to Rome. After repeated failures some measure of success was achieved under Emperor Susenyos I, but not until 1624 did the Emperor make formal submission to the Pope. 
Susenyos made Roman Catholicism the official state religion, but was met with heavy resistance by his subjects and by the authorities of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and eventually had to abdicate in 1632 in favor of his son, Phasilides, who promptly restored Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity as the state religion. He then in 1633 expelled the Jesuits, and in 1665 Phasilides ordered that all Jesuit books, the books of the Franks be burned. Topic. Influence on the Reformation Topic. David Daniels has suggested that the Ethiopian Church has had a stronger impact on the Reformation than most scholars acknowledge. For Martin Luther, who spearheaded the Reformation, Daniels says, "...the Ethiopian Church conferred legitimacy on Luther's emerging Protestant vision of a church outside the authority of the Roman Catholic papacy," as it was an ancient church with direct ties to the apostles." According to Daniels, Martin Luther saw that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church practiced elements of faith including, "...communion in both kind, vernacular scriptures, and married clergy," and these practices became customary in the Lutheran churches. In 1534, a cleric of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Michael the Deacon, met with Martin Luther and affirmed the Augsburg Confession as a "...good creed." In addition, Martin Luther stated that the Lutheran Mass agreed with that used by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. As a result, the Lutheran Churches extended full communion with the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Recent history In more modern times, the Ethiopian Church experienced a series of developments. The earliest was in the 19th century with the publication of an Amharic translation of the Bible. Largely the work of Abu Rumi over ten years in Cairo, this version, with some changes, held sway until Emperor Haile Selassie ordered a new translation which appeared in 1960 over 1. Haile Selassie also played a prominent role in further reforms of the Church, which included encouraging the distribution of Abu Rumi translation throughout Ethiopia, as well as his promotion of improved education of clergy, a significant step in the emperor's effort being the founding of the Theological College of the Holy Trinity Church in December 1944. A third development came after Haile Selassie's restoration to Ethiopia, when he issued, on 30 November, Decree No. 2 of 1942, a new law reforming the church. The primary objectives of this decree were to put the finances of the Church in order, to create a central fund for its activities, and to set forth requirements for the appointment of clergy which had been fairly lax until then. The Coptic and Ethiopian churches reached an agreement on 13 July 1948 that led to autocephaly for the Ethiopian Church. Five bishops were immediately consecrated by the Coptic Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of All Africa, empowered to elect a new Patriarch for their church, and the successor to Abuna Carello's IV would have the power to consecrate new bishops. This promotion was completed when Coptic Orthodox Pope Joseph II consecrated an Ethiopian-born Archbishop, Abuna Basilios, 14 January 1951. Then in 1959, Pope Cyril VI of Alexandria crowned Abuna Basilios as the first Patriarch of Ethiopia. Patriarch Abuna Basilios died in 1971, and was succeeded that year by Patriarch Abuna Tawafilis. With the fall of Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church was disestablished as the state church. The new Marxist government began nationalizing property including land owned by the church. Patriarch Abuna Tawafilis was arrested in 1976 by the Marxist Derg military junta, and secretly executed in 1979. The government ordered the church to elect a new patriarch, and Abuna Takla Haymanot was enthroned. The Coptic Orthodox Church refused to recognize the election and enthronement of Abuna Tekel Haymanot on the grounds that the Synod of the Ethiopian Church had not removed Abuna Tawafilis and that the government had not publicly acknowledged his death, and he was thus still the legitimate Patriarch of Ethiopia. Formal relations between the two churches were halted, although they remained in communion with each other. Formal relations between the two churches resumed on July 13, 2007. Patriarch Abuna Tekel Haymanot proved to be much less accommodating to the Derg regime than it had expected, and so when the Patriarch died in 1988, a new Patriarch with closer ties to the regime was sought. 
The Archbishop of Gondar, a member of the Derg era Ethiopian parliament, was elected and enthroned as Patriarch Abuna Mercorios. Following the fall of the Derg regime in 1991, and the coming to power of the EPRDF government, Patriarch Abuna Mercorios abdicated under public and governmental pressure. The Church then elected a new Patriarch, Abuna Paulos, who was recognized by the Coptic Orthodox Pope of Alexandria. The former Patriarch Abuna Mercorios then fled abroad, and announced from exile that his abdication had been made under duress and thus he was still the legitimate Patriarch of Ethiopia. Several bishops also went into exile and formed a breakaway alternate synod. This exiled synod comprised some Ethiopian churches in North America and Europe who recognized Patriarch Abuna Mercorios, while the synod inside Ethiopia continued to uphold the legitimacy of Patriarch Abuna Paulos. Following the independence of Eritrea as a nation in 1993, the Coptic Orthodox Church in 1994 appointed an archbishop for the Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church, which in turn obtained autocephaly in 1998 with the reluctant approval of its mother synod. That same year the first Eritrean Patriarch was consecrated. As of 2005, there are many Ethiopian Orthodox churches located throughout the United States and other countries to which Ethiopians have migrated Archbishop Yesahak, 1997. The church claims more than 38 million members in Ethiopia, forming about half the country's population. Patriarch Abuna Paulos died on August 16, 2012, followed four days later by Prime Minister Meles Zanawi. On February 28, 2013, a college of electors assembled in Addis Ababa and elected Abuna Matthias to be the sixth Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. On July 25, 2018, delegates from the Patriarchate in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and those in the United States declared reunification in Washington, D.C. with the assistance of Ethiopia's Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed. Declaring the end of a 26-year-old schism, the Church announced that it acknowledges two patriarchs, His Holiness Abuna Mercorios, 4th Patriarch of Ethiopia and His Holiness Abuna Matthias I, 6th Patriarch and Catholicos of Ethiopia, Archbishop of Aksum and Ichej of the See of St. Topic: Practices and beliefs the faith and practice of Orthodox Ethiopian Christians includes elements from Myophysite Christianity as it has developed in Ethiopia over the centuries. Christian beliefs include belief in God in J. E. Z. Amharic, Ejibeher, lit. Lord of the Universe, veneration to the Virgin Mary, the angels, and the saints, besides others. According to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church itself, there are no non-Christian elements in the religion other than those from the Old Testament, or Hig. Or it, to which are added those from the New Testament, or Hig Wangil. A hierarchy of Kidusan angelic messengers and saints conveys the prayers of the faithful to God and carries out the divine will, so when an Ethiopian Christian is in difficulty, he or she appeals to these as well as to God. In more formal and regular rituals, priests communicate on behalf of the community, and only priests may enter the inner sanctum of the usually circular or octagonal church where the tabat ark, dedicated to the church's patron saint is housed. On important religious holidays, the tabat is carried on the head of a priest and escorted in procession outside the church. It is the tabat, not the church, which is consecrated. At many services, most parish members remain in the outer ring, where debtors sing hymns and dance. The Eucharist is given only to those who feel pure, have fasted regularly, and have, in general, properly conducted themselves. In practice, communion is mainly limited to young children and the elderly, those who are at a sexually active age or who have sexual desires generally do not receive the Eucharist. Worshippers receiving communion may enter the middle ring of the church to do so. Ethiopian Orthodox believers are strict Trinitarians, maintaining the Orthodox teaching that God is united in three persons Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This concept is known as Slaze, Gies for Trinity. Daily services constitute only a small part of an Ethiopian Orthodox Christian's religious observance. Several holy days require prolonged services, singing and dancing, and feasting. An important religious requirement, however, is the keeping of fast days, during which adherents abstain from consuming meat and animal products, and refrain from sexual activity. All devout believers are to maintain the full schedule of fasts, comprising at least 250 days a year apart from other forms of fasting purely left to individual decision of the faithful. 
fast for Hudadi or Abiyya Som, 55 days prior to Easter fasica. This fast is divided into three separate periods, Som Herkel, eight days commemorating an early Christian figure, Som Arba, 40 days of Lent, and Som Himamat, seven days commemorating Holy Week. Fast of the Apostles, 10 to 40 days, which the Apostles kept after they had received the Holy Spirit. It begins after Pentecost. The fast Som Dinet, which is on Wednesdays in commemoration of the plot organized to kill Jesus Christ by Caiaphas and the members of the House of the High Priest and Fridays in commemoration of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ starts on Wednesday after Pentecost and spans up to Easter, in other words all Wednesdays and Fridays except during 50 days after Easter. The fast of Dormition, 16 days. The fast preceding Christmas, 40 days Advent. It begins with Sibkat on 15th Heder and ends on Christmas Eve with the Feast of Jenna and the 29th of Tosses and 28th if the year is preceded by leap year. The Fast of Nineveh, commemorating the preaching of Jonah. It comes on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of the third week before Lent. The Gahad of Timkat Epiphany, fast on the eve of Epiphany, in addition to standard holy days, most Christians observe many saints. Days. A man might give a small feast on his personal saint. S. Day. The local voluntary association called the Mahiber connected with each church honors its patron saint with a special service and a feast two or three times a year. Topic. Exorcism Topic. Priests intervene and perform exorcisms on behalf of those believed to be afflicted by demons or Buddha. According to a 2010 Pew Research Center study, 74% of Christians in Ethiopia claim to have experienced or witnessed an exorcism. Demon-possessed persons are brought to a church or prayer meeting. Often, when an ill person has not responded to modern medical treatment, the affliction is attributed to demons. Unusual or especially perverse deeds, particularly when performed in public, are symptomatic of a demoniac. Superhuman strength such as breaking one's bindings, as described in the New Testament accounts along with glossolalia are observed in the afflicted. Amsalu Galita, in a modern case study, relates elements that are common to Ethiopian Christian exorcisms. It includes singing praise and victory songs, reading from the scripture, prayer and confronting the spirit in the name of Jesus. Dialogue with the Spirit is another important part of the exorcism ceremony. It helps the counselor exorcist to know how the Spirit was operating in the life of the demoniac. The signs and events mentioned by the Spirit are affirmed by the victim after deliverance. The exorcism is not always successful, and Galita notes another instance in which the usual methods were unsuccessful, and the demons apparently left the subject at a later time. In any event, in all cases the Spirit is commanded in no other name than the name of Jesus. Distinctive traits Biblical canon The Tewahedo Church canon contains 81 books. This canon contains the books accepted by other Orthodox Christians. The narrower canon contains Enoch, Jubilees, and I-2-3 Maccabean. These are unrelated to the Greek I-2-3 Maccabees with which they are often confused. The canonical Enoch differs from the editions of the Gies manuscripts in the British Museum and elsewhere AQ used by foreign scholars OTP, for example in treatment of the Nephilim of Genesis chapter 6. The current 81-book version was published in 1986, containing the same text as previously published in the Haile Selassie version of the Bible, only with some minor modifications to the New Testament translation. Some sources speak of the broader canon, which has never been published as a single compilation but is said to include all of the narrower canon, as well as additional New Testament books said to have been used by the early church, two books of the Covenant, four books of Synodos, an epistle of Peter to Clement, also known as Ethiopic Clement and the Ethiopic Didascalia. These may not all bear close resemblance to works with similar titles known in the West. An eight-part, Ethiopic version of the history of the Jewish people written by Joseph ben Gorion, known as the Pseudo-Josephus, is considered part of the broader canon, though it would be considered an Old Testament work. Topic. Language. 
The divine services of the Ethiopian Church are celebrated in the Je -E -Z language. It has been the liturgical language of the Church at least since the arrival of the nine saints Abba Pantaluwan, Abba Jerima Isaac, or Yeshak, Abba Aftse, Abba Guba, Abba Aleph, Abba Yemada, Abba Likanos, and Abba Sema, who fled persecution by the Byzantine Emperor after the Council of Chalcedon 451. The Septuagint Greek version was originally translated into J. Ez, but later revisions show clear evidence of the use of Hebrew, Syriac, and Arabic sources. The first translation into a modern vernacular was done in the 19th century by a man who is usually known as Abu Rumi. Later, Haile Selassie sponsored Amharic translations of the Ge'ez scriptures during his reign, one before World War II and one afterward. Sermons today are usually delivered in the local language. Topic. Architecture. Topic. There are many monolithic rock -hewn churches in Ethiopia, most famously eleven churches at Lalibela. Besides these, two main types of architecture are found—one basilican, the other native. The Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion at Aksum is an example of the basilican design, though the early basilicas are nearly all in ruin. These examples show the influence of the architects who, in the 6th century, built the basilicas at San and elsewhere in the Arabian Peninsula. There are two forms of native churches, one oblong, traditionally found in Tigray, the other circular, traditionally found in Amhara and Shiwa though either style may be found elsewhere. In both forms, the sanctuary is square and stands clear in the center, and the arrangements are based on Jewish tradition. Walls and ceilings are adorned with frescoes. A courtyard, circular or rectangular, surrounds the body of the church. Modern Ethiopian churches may incorporate the basilican or native styles and use contemporary construction techniques and materials. In rural areas, the church and outer court are often thatched, with mud-built walls. <laughs> Ark of the Covenant the Ethiopian Church claims that one of its churches, Our Lady Mary of Zion, is host to the original Ark of the Covenant that Moses carried with the Israelites during the Exodus. Only one priest is allowed into the building where the Ark is located, ostensibly due to dangerous biblical warnings. As a result, international scholars doubt that the original Ark is truly there, although a case has been put forward by controversial popular writer Graham Hancock in his book The Sign and the Seal. Throughout Ethiopia, Orthodox churches are not considered churches until the local bishop gives them a tablet, a replica of the tablets in the original Ark of the Covenant. The tablet is at least 6 inches 15 centimeters square, and it is made of either alabaster, marble, or wood see acacia. It is always kept in ornate coverings on the altar. Only priests are allowed to touch the tablet. In an elaborate procession, the tablet is carried around the outside of the church amid joyful song on the feast day of that particular church's namesake. On the great feast of T. Imkit, known as Epiphany or Theophany in Europe, a group of churches send their tablet to celebrate the occasion at a common location where a pool of water or a river is to be found. Topic. Similarities to Judaism Topic. The Ethiopian Church places a heavier emphasis on Old Testament teachings than one might find in Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholic or Protestant churches, and its followers adhere to certain practices that one finds in Orthodox or Conservative Judaism. Ethiopian Christians, like some other Eastern Christians, traditionally follow dietary rules that are similar to Jewish kashrut, specifically with regard to how an animal is slaughtered. Similarly, pork is prohibited, though unlike rabbinical kashrut, Ethiopian cuisine does mix dairy products with meat. Women are prohibited from entering the church temple during menses, they are also expected to cover their hair with a large scarf or shash while in church, as described in 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. As with Orthodox synagogues, men and women are seated separately in the Ethiopian church, with men on the left and women on the right when facing the altar. Women covering their heads and separation of the sexes in churches officially is common to some other Christian traditions. It is also the rule in some non-Christian religions, Islam and Orthodox Judaism among them. Ethiopian Orthodox worshippers remove their shoes when entering a church temple, in accordance with Exodus chapter 3 verse 5 in which Moses, while viewing the burning bush, was commanded to remove his shoes while standing on holy ground. 
Furthermore, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church upholds Sabbatarianism, observing the seventh day Sabbath, Saturday, in addition to the Lord's Day, Sunday, although more emphasis, because of the resurrection of Christ, is laid upon Sunday. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church calls for male circumcision, with near universal prevalence among Orthodox men in Ethiopia. Dedera a Dedera is an itinerant lay priest figure trained by the Ethiopian Church as a scribe, cantor, and often as a folk healer, who may also function in roles comparable to a deacon or exorcist. Folklore and legends ascribe the role of magician to the Dedera as well. <laughs> Abuna Patriarch Catholicoi, Archbishops and Bishops Abuna Patriarch Catholicos since 1959, when the Church was granted autocephaly by Cyril V, Pope of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, an Ethiopian Patriarch Catholicos of Eritrea also carrying the title of Abuna is the head of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church. The Abuna who is known officially as Patriarch and Catholicos of Ethiopia, Archbishop of Aksum and Ichej of the See of St. Takalhamanot, the incumbent head of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church is Abuna Matthias who acceded to this position on 28 February 2013. Archbishops and Bishops Ethiopia Abuna Matthias and Abuna Mercorios, heads of all archbishops and patriarchs of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church in the United States There are the following bishops Abuna Fanuel, Archbishop of Washington, D.C. and California. Abuna Marcos, Archbishop of New York and its surrounding areas. Abuna Jacob, Archbishop of Georgia and its surrounding areas. Abuna Awasatevas, Archbishop of Minnesota. Abuna Salama, Archbishop of Ohio, South America. Abuna Thaddeus, Archbishop of the Caribbean and Latin America. Western Europe. Abuna Yosef, Archbishop of Europe, in Rome. Middle East, Abuna Demetros, Archbishop of United Arab Emirates and its surrounding areas Abuna Kawestos, Archbishop of Jerusalem The Church has 60 bishops and 44 dioceses. The current eparchies of the Church include, Awasa Sadamo, Aksum Ambo Arsi Asosa Afar Bail Gobe Walega North Wallo South Wallo Desi Gambela West Gojam Bardar East Gojam Debra Marcos North Gondar South Gondar Debra Tabor Jerusalem Alubaber Jima Kenbata Mizan Teferi Kafa Nigel Barina Aga Den Omo Selalaya East Tigra West Tigra Khartoum and Nubia Sudan, Africa Shoa Nazareth North Shoa Debra Burhan America and Western Hemisphere Atmosphere Trinidad and Latin America Topic See also Topic Abuna Christianity in Ethiopia Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church Ethiopian Catholic Church Ethiopian Chant List of Abunas of Ethiopia Oriental Orthodox Church Topic References Topic This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Abyssinian Church. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. Topic external links Topic Divine Liturgy of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church Ethiopian Religions – Christianity, Islam, Judaism and Paganism Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church The Oldest Site CNEWA article by Ronald Roberson, Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church Historical Evolution of Ethiopian Anaphoras Abink, JA Bibliography on Christianity in Ethiopia Leiden, African Studies Center, 2003 PDF An Introduction to Ethiopic Christian Literature by J. M. Hardin, D.D., L.L.D. Canon of St. Patrick's, Dublin, 1926.